Um, let's welcome uh, Dr. Eve. He is the author for the Python for Finance book, and he's a keynote speaker for the PyCon happening uh, from tomorrow. Um, and we, we, we're glad to have like a few minutes from him to hear from him about the Python and the finance. So over to Dr. Eve. Thanks very much. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here. It's my first time in Singapore, so actually, indeed, for the keynote and the tutorial on Saturday. And this was just decided before the meetup, but I'm more than happy to speak a little bit about what we do. It's all centered around Python and finance. I've just opened a couple of my websites. I have pulled together them in a, in a file that I can share, that you can make a picture or I share with the, with the organizers. Uh, most of the information and links you can find on my website, which is my last name, hillpitch.com. Um, this is actually what it is, and you can go through that, get a summary, many, many links. So here you see I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quants. The name suggests what we do. I authored a couple of books. I will show you a lecture for computational finance, and I'm also lecturing at the CQF program. Some of you might know when I'm organizing meetups and conferences around Python and finance. And you find there things like this seven-minute video about Python for Quant Finance, um, you find also my two-page overview about Python for computational finance and why it's taking over. So more or less, this is a summary of what you will see here anyways. I don't want to go through the details. If you want to follow me and want to stay up to date, you should follow me on Twitter. DYGH is the Twitter handle, but again, I have compiled all these links uh, for you to take a picture later on. The Python Quants is our company. Um, what we try to do is making the best of open source for quant finance, so we are we coming uh, out of a time where we did mainly client work, um, doing development work, consulting around Python, other open source technologies like R for quant finance. So we are more and more developing to an education and training company. More on that later on. On our website, tpq.io, again, you find a couple of, of links and, and stuff that we do. So if you go there, um, again, I don't want to go through details. You will, you will see what we do, but I show them in detail. Probably I'm best known uh, in the meantime around the world for my Python books. Uh, the most popular one is Python for Finance, the O'Reilly book, maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, this is selling quite well still. Um, and I guess this will kind of uh, avoid in the space in that I cover a little bit of finance and cover quite a little bit of Python. And it makes kind of, a, I guess, a good combination to get an entry point. It doesn't teach Python from ground up. In a sense, it doesn't teach finance either. So <laughs> you, should know, <laughs> you should know a little bit of both, actually. Uh, but many people who are working in this space actually have either finance background, have working with finance, have, having had experience in programming with MATLAB, R, VBA, or whatsoever. And a little, a little bit of background in both disciplines, I think, is kind of a, kind of a good book. And I sold a couple of thousand times, actually. Uh, my second book, which was actually written before the first one, but it came out later, it's Derivatives Analytics with Python. This is much more involved. This teaches actually quant finance and uses Python to illustrate everything. Uh, there has around about 5,500 lines of Python code, uh, but it doesn't really explain how to get from the equations to the implementation. So uh, in combination with the red book, you get the complete deal. So actually, this was kind of the idea to write this red book with O'Reilly, which fills kind of the gap here from quant finance to Python. Uh, and a combination of both, I think, that makes a, a complete picture when it gets to quant finance. Then there is the third one. It's uh, listed volatility and variance zero. So you see it's getting more and more specialized. This is now on a product level. It's an outgrowth of a client project that we did. This is now with uh, Wiley and in the editing process. It should be out um, around end of October, beginning of November, something like that. Uh, I'm now, uh, or, yeah, <laughs> missing maybe my deadline to get back with feedback. So I have gotten kind of thing from the from the publisher, but I haven't had a chance to have a look at it. So maybe I'm the one in the end who is kind of postponing publication. Yeah, these are the three books, and I'm currently thinking about writing a fourth one. Python for algorithmic trading, or someone from Contopia is first, maybe Thomas Viecki or somebody else. Um, maybe I, I, I would rethink it, but many people have asked me about writing such a book because there's obviously lots of interest, and Contopia is one of the, the lighthouse examples there that uh, algo trading is kind of a, a nice thing and, and of interest for many people out there. Yeah, these are the three books, and I guess uh, due to the O'Reilly book, which is the best selling one. Um, Many people know me around the world these days. Then 
What we also do is providing a platform. Our approach to the platform is completely different to what Quantopia is. Maybe not completely different, but we are more or less focusing on, on providing a set of tools that we create and we use the platform more or less uh, yeah, as a tool and not as a thing in and of itself. So the platform itself doesn't do that much apart from providing shell access to the server, Jupyter notebook, web editing, live chat. Um, now what we are using it extensively for is for providing trainings in a systematic fashion uh, and so forth. And it's completely free. We have a couple of thousand registered, I guess around 5,000 registered on the platform and using it more or less on a regular basis, like with all these numbers. And uh, in total, I guess we have an outreach in the community to about 10,000 people uh, around that. Uh, not only due to the platform, a couple of other things that we do. For example, our conference series, this started out in 2014, uh, when we did our first four Python quants conference in uh, New York. Already quite successful. It started out with a one day thing only. And uh, this year in New York, uh, which was for the third time we had already five days. So we're now, do, we're now starting Monday morning, 9 o'clock, and end uh, with the after-conference beers around midnight on Friday. Uh, so it's kind of a very intensive week, but, but really nice. Uh, what we do there is uh, we have four boot camps. Uh, if I scroll down, they also I see the numbers. Everything is broadcast live, so we have many people also from Asia who follow us uh, online. Uh, we have an introductory Python for Finance Bootcamp, then a technical one covering things like uh, performance I.O. Uh, visualization and a couple of other things. Then we have, uh, this is actually new or was new this year, Python and Excel. Many people are obviously interested in combining these two major technologies and the financial bootcamp is more or less about uh, algo trading, automated trading. And then the, the fifth and final day on Friday is the conference day. And this year, Delaney, who, is, yeah, who was speaking at our conference as well, um, so with Quantopia we have a couple of um, points where we're working together, uh, but we also had, for example, Jim Gatherer, I think he's well known in the, in the quant finance space, who gave a keynote about rough volatility with Python and many, many others out of the space. And as a niche conference, obviously the focus is indeed on Python for finance. So I consider what we do here as a further subset, uh, even a more, uh, more niche product um, compared to PyData. Think of Python, you have web, blah, 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 you have PyData, and below PyData, I would put ourselves here with the For Python Quants conference that we, I do with uh, Fitch Learning once a year in London, once a year in New York, and we are thinking of doing it in Asia as well, maybe in Singapore in the near future. But this is uh, still uh, in discussion. Then another point where we're working together with Quantopian is this year's ARPM Python conference, which will be held for the first time. Uh, so it's another conference that uh, I, we are now involved in, in organizing. Uh, but this is, uh, within the quant finance space, this is then focused on the risk management and portfolio management side. So again, a little bit more niche to what we do, our other conference. Uh, and you see the more major an industry gets, uh, the more specialized you see the products and things going on there. Conferences, events, public trainings are not the only thing that we do. I'm also organizing uh, two meetup groups. Python for Quant Finance in London is my biggest meetup group. We have there, let me see, almost 1,500 uh, members. You see it down there. And we have roughly eight meetup events over the year. Uh, again, compared to PyData London, which is, uh, at least to my knowledge, uh, the biggest Python group we have, they have roughly twice as many members and twice as many meetups. <laughs> so, uh, but for our, for our niche effort there, Python for Quant Finance, I think we are good. And you see, uh, like 158 sign-ups, so roughly up to 100 people we have per meetup, and I'm really grateful that Thomson Reuters is usually sponsoring with kind of a nice venue, trains and uh, infrastructure there. So really excellent to have these partners that other, or otherwise our meetups and events wouldn't be possible, uh, neither the For Python Quants Conference nor the uh, uh, For Python or Python for Quant Finance meetups with our partners like Fitch Learning and Thomson Reuters. Then, this is actually my focus currently, um, our training side. I mentioned before, we are more and more moving in this. Um, and the demand was obviously always there, and now we can fulfill it with our online trainings, um, which are centered around financial data science, algo trading, and computational finance. So these are also the major classes, actually. We see here, currently, we've had the first round of Python for financial data science. Um, we are now close to finishing the Python for algo trading class. The next one will be centered around my derivatives analytics book, Python for computation and finance. 
We then have a couple of pro tab topics that we cover, like Python and Excel, um, best practices uh, with Python. I'm currently in discussion with other experts like uh, Francesca Tet, which is well known in our ecosystem, about adding a database class with Python, so building more and more things uh, that we can provide online there. And this is actually something I'm really proud of, that we're the first ever to offer a Python for Finance University certificate. So if you finish all these classes as a package and pass a final exam and or project, then we are able to award with our German university, uh, HDW, University of Applied Science, in the Saarland area where I'm from, uh, to issue a university certificate and not kind of a certificate. Within Europe, this can be um, due to our ECTS, which is European Credit Transfer System, can, when people are studying for a master's degree, can even be um, brought into a master program that you're uh, doing there. And this is the next step. I'm currently in discussion with um, designing and providing a complete master of finance degree out of Germany, but ob obviously virtually uh, delivered uh, globally these days um, around these topics, like um, a master of science for financial data science and computational finance. Now, this is actually currently our focus. I'm really happy, and this is evolving really, really well and uh, taking up at least 50% of my time at the moment, in addition, I'm also giving corporate trainings for hedge funds in London and so forth. So training and ed education has become kind of the big thing. Again, here, the, the article, Computational Finance, where Python is taking over, is on my website. So if you want to have the, the two-page summary, I think this is the best go-to source, uh, summarizing a couple of things about the language, the ecosystem, what we do, how I see the industry. Obviously, this is kind of a marketing piece, so <laughs> kind of a research paper, but uh, they didn't complain about that actually. So that much about what we do, everything centered around Python for finance. I'm German, I'm Germany based, uh, we are operating out of Germany, but uh, yeah, globally is kind of a big word, but at least in the financial centers around the world. So I was 10 days ago in Basel, I will be uh, in two weeks in Zurich, which are maybe the smaller ones, but still important, I'm living close to Luxembourg. Usually I'm, I'm regularly in Frankfurt, two times a month in London, a couple of times a year in New York, and now we are maybe getting more and more over to Asia as well. Yeah, I've compiled and I promised a overview. These are all the links that you have seen, so if you're interested in, in following up. But usually, just if you Google my name or the Python quants, um, that's kind of uh, quite easy to jump from one thing to the other. Um, I want to do more things in Asia, so if you are interested in any of our training offerings, um, just refer and, and use the code PyAsia, then you're good for a 30% discount, um, just as an offer now that I'm here. And again, you find everything, and if you have questions, I've put a couple of cards over there, that if you're interested in my email address or whatsoever, uh, pick up a card. And yeah, that's more or less it, what I have to say. I offer, I mean, if time allows, I can speak a little bit about Python, but I see it's kind of already quite a bit late, so, so this was more or less a little bit of a marketing and overview of what we do, actually. Uh, one marketing question. Sure. In your company, the logo, why the snake is trying to bite itself? <laughs> <laughs> so say it again. Uh, the, the last part of your question I understood, the, the first part. No. Yeah, the logo of your company, yeah. right? There's a snake and yeah. there's a bar chart inside. But the snake is trying to bite itself. Mm -hmm. Do you have any meaning? Not really. <laughs> this was kind of... Uh, usually I get the question, what is the animal on the cover of my O'Reilly book? So, they're, 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 I, I, don't, I don't remember the English name. In German it's a Schlitz or Rüssler. This is kind of, I've never heard it before. Um, so, and I have a, a concrete answer to that. There was no discussion. I mean, we decided for this logo. They, they provided the, uh, uh, the, the logo designs, and we decided for that, so no, no deeper meaning. We, we Germans are really practical, practical so it just, uh, we thought it would be good, and then we went with it. Other questions? <laughs>